Hey y'all, this is Molly Kay. Hope y'all are well. I have something very interesting I want to share with you. Um, it's interesting because I noticed some things that started to happen at the beginning of the year. And so I'm just noticing a gradual progression and things starting to be in the news. And I know, you know, when they start talking about these things, it's usually for a reason either for you to not pay attention or for you to pay attention or to mislead you so this is one of those stories where it ties into some of the other stuff that we've already talked about on this channel the rationing um, associated with the climate agenda and the forever chemicals where they're trying to scare you into not eating certain products because they are toxic or not good so there's this constant theme of things that are not going to be good for you to eat. And so I just want to talk to you about it so that you will understand where things are going. All right. Um, Kerrygold, I'm sorry, let me go back. Why has some Kerrygold butter been taken off the shelves in New York stores? This story came out January 18th, 2023. It was updated on January 23rd. 20th 2023 um and this is uh pertaining to new york so i'm, I'm gonna assume this is a new york area newspaper Kerrygold gold pure irish butter has been hailed as the cream of the crop by everyone from martha stewart stewart to courtney kardashian made made with milk from grass-fed cows and known for its silky consistency and golden yellow color the all-natural product became Ireland's first billion euro food brand in 2018. Sales in U.S. supermarkets rank only second only to butter from Minnesota-based dairy giant Lando Lakes. Recently, though, Kerrygold's most iconic butter versions, including blocks packaged in gold and silver, colored foil wrappers with an image of a grazing cow in Celtic lettering have gone missing from store shelves in New York State and shoppers have taken notice. Among them, Adele Fico of Gates, a force on the Rochester art scene for decades. She swears by the stuff and has long been in the habit of buying multiple blocks at a time storing them in the freezer and defrosting them as needed. At, the, at this point, however, I've only got one left because we used so much over the holidays, she said, but a Kerrygold representative said block, butter blocks and sticks will be back after packaging change required by a just enacted state law. So here's where, you know, you saw in the science daily research paper about the creating scarcity and using law to you know force people to change their habits so this scarcity is going to continue because they're they're using the law in in different little ways to create this scarcity so this is just the beginning it well it started during the pandemic but you're going to see a lot more of it. So you need to really check your state laws to see what is going on, depending on what state you live in. I'm sure the more liberal states will be aggressive about it, more aggressive than the red states. Among a slew of new measures that went into effect December 31st is a ban on PFAS or per and polyfluorinated alkyl substances in food packaging. Since the 1940s, man-made PFAS have all have been used in all sorts of items from carpeting to cosmetics to frying pans to make them water and stain or grease resistant or nonstick. Now we have been having this problem since we've been using this product since the 1940s. All of a sudden, you know, everybody has made their money the world is contaminated. People are sick and dying from all sorts of diseases and things created by these chemicals. And all of a sudden, they want to try to 
say they're doing something about it after all these years when they knew, you know, when they put this stuff out on the market, what it would do. Known as forever chemicals because they linger in the environment for long for long periods of time, scientific studies have linked them to adverse health effects in humans and animals. Going back to, you know, the article I did about the fish. Packaging and material, sorry, packaging materials used for Kerrygold butter blocks and sticks are among those with PFAS. So the varieties have been pulled back by retailers statewide, including Wegmans, food markets, tops, so on and so forth. So anyway, the Rochester area Wegmans, tops, and Walmart locations we visited recently continue to sell other gold, carry gold items including two spreadable butters, naturally soft, pure Irish butter and Irish butter with olive oil, which are packaged in tubs that do not have PFAS. Meanwhile, packaging for blocks and sticks is being reformulated, the Kerrygold representative explained in an email statement. And so this is tying back to if you look at what's happening in the UK, in Ireland, the they're doing rationing there already. They're also taking land, controlling the um, farming industry in a way that is going to create scarcity. They're going to use different things in our food to impact climate change and that's all I'm going to say you just have to read through the lines all right so anyway um, the representative said we apologize for any inconvenience this may cause and we'll have these much loved products back on shelves in the coming weeks he said he did not offer a more precise timeline for their return but a number of top shoppers likely would welcome them again in keeping with carry goals increasing popularity from 2021 to 2022 sales of the top of the butter at tops rose more rose 19% said Kathleen Sauter, a spokesperson for the supermarket chain based in Williamsville, Erie County. So that is one story. Now I want to show this video to you. Let's see if I can find it. Oh, I just had it. I don't know what happened. <sighs> um, Okay, so I saw this article, well, I'm sorry, this video that was on YouTube. Need Morningstar Farms Nuggets in two minutes. Three days ago. Let me turn the sound down. I hate to have to play these commercials, but um, it's interesting because this butter is used at the beginning of this video. All right, let me go back brand of butter is disappearing off the shelves temporarily because of something called forever chemicals plus our tests found concerning levels of cadmium or lead two toxic heavy metals in most of the dark chocolate bars we tested consumer reports found heavy metals in a lot of dark chocolate brands find out how much you'd have to eat to really be at risk for health problems and these two bottles of ketchup from the u.s and the uk seem almost identical but wait until you see the difference in their ingredients. Today, we're chewing on what's really in your food. Let's dig into it. 
When we go to the grocery store, we're used to checking all kinds of labels mm. from that expiration date to the calorie count also. Yeah, now some doctors want you to look for another label, one that says no PFAS. Dina Demetrius digs into why it could be important to your health. It's as natural as the day my great-grandfather made the butter. Irish Kerrygold butter is prized by many consumers for its grass-fed goodness. But what consumers may not have realized, that grease-resistant wrapper contains per- or polyfluoroalkyl carbons, PFAS for short, a toxic artificial compound. They last forever. They're called the forever chemicals because they're very persistent. University of Notre Dame biochemist Graham Peasley co-authored studies on PFAS. His team uses a special particle accelerator to test fluorine levels in products. They are used in over 1,600 different industrial processes and products. They make Teflon pans non-sticky. They make clothing waterproof. They make packaging waterproof. In late 2022, Kerrygold stopped restocking its foil wrap butter to retool its packaging for California and New York ahead of new state PFAS laws. The company provided a statement that reads in part, we will continue to ensure packaging for our products remains compliant with all relevant state legislation and regulatory requirements. Kerrygold's butter wrapping is not linked to bad health outcomes, but PFAS in general have been linked to certain cancers and other health dangers like high cholesterol and preeclampsia those who are pregnant. We've since discovered that all these PFAS are immune suppressants. So they suppress your immune system. And that means any opportunistic disease, including some types of cancer, could take over. 11 states now have rules either banning or reducing PFAS levels in items ranging from carpets, clothing, and cosmetics to food wrappers and containers. Many companies have voluntarily removed intentionally added PFAS from their products or packaging. The site PFAS Central by scientists at the Green Policy Institute lists dozens of companies with PFAS-free products, including Clean at Sephora, IKEA, H&M, and Chick-fil-A food packaging. The big companies have uh, a pledge to faith. All right, so my question is, why now? From the 1940s to now, we have used these products and nobody gave a crap. But suddenly, when they need to transition this, this system and they want us to change drastically, quickly, they're going to create scarcity because now all these state laws have been enacted. So you're going to see stuff pulled from shelves. You're going to, you know, start seeing stuff missing. So, you know, for one, it's a, it's a sign that you need to stock up on things that you use regularly like if it's butter or whatever you need to get it throw it in the freezer but on the flip side things are changing they're also changing the things that are in our foods and we don't know what they're changing them with i know i've read a lot of packaging that has a lot of bioengineered you know stuff in it and they don't tell you what the bioengineered thing is they just have it on the labeling so when I see that I don't buy those things um but I just find the timing really interesting all these um all these coincidences I'll just say that phase out uh, by 2025 and the smaller companies are already doing it Peasley says Notice he said by 2025, a lot of stuff is supposed to be happening in 2024, 2025. So, you know, pay attention to what they're saying and what is happening everywhere because they're telling us what they're doing without really telling us what they're doing. I'm like giving you the read between the lines things that they don't actually say, but they are wanting to get people to change and you're not going to do it on your own even though we didn't create these problems we didn't create these products they created them they told us they were good they told us they would make us better they would make life easier and now all of a sudden oh they're bad but punish us and not the corporations that made it and they're going to still have an opportunity to make money and we're going to be punished we're not we're going to have to deal with scarcity we're going to have to deal with rationing we're going to have to deal with changes in the formulas for our foods that we eat 
And so that's why it's going to be really important for you to grow your own food as much as you can. Learn how to make your own butter and cheese and so on and so forth. Connect with local dairies. Ask for hints and help. They're hard to come by, but consumers should start looking for labels that say no PFAS. Dina Demetrius, CBS News, Los Angeles. So they want you to lab, want you to look for this. So, so this is the predictive programming, the the conditioning you. They're telling you now, all of a sudden, this is bad. Look for this and don't buy this thing. Buy something else. It's all a big mind screw. That's the best way to describe it. Because because at the end of the day, none of it makes sense. We've been eating this stuff since the 40s. I grew up eating everything they said that that was that's bad today. My mom and dad had it in their house, you know, from margarine, um, all these different types of milk, oat milk, this milk that, like, it's just insane. So anyway, while you're looking at stuff on the products. Ketchup is a favorite around the world. Look at these two bottles. They seem pretty simple. Okay, you remember I told you about the tomato uh, shortage? I don't know if I did, but tomatoes and lettuce and something else are in short demand in the UK. And it's starting to be that way here in certain grocery stores, foreign grocery stores, like Aldi, um, Lidl, and that was another grocery store. But anyway, it's a trend. And what they're doing overseas, they're going to institute here. But in the meantime, we will still be impacted by those things because these large um, international conglomerate grocery store chains have stores here. So whatever's going on over there will impact us here. Similar, you got the one from the UK over here and the US one over here. Just some differences in the packaging, but wait until you see what's also different with their ingredient list. Check out the differences here. So for the UK bottle of Heinz ketchup, there are about six ingredients, all recognizable, but that's not the same for the classic US one. Take a look at how much longer this thing is. There are three US version. See this right here, high fructose corn syrup, corn syrup, and natural flavoring. Those ingredients have raised some controversy the past few years. For example, the Environmental Working Group says natural flavoring, natural, it's not actually that. It's pretty deceiving. To be clear, they're not saying the ketchup is bad for you, but they say it's an example of not always knowing what you're getting. According to EWG, they say natural flavoring can contain mixtures of more than 100 chemicals. Heinz does not list exactly what natural flavorings are. They just say it's a mix of spices. Now today, there are more than 10,000 chemicals and additives allowed in food in the United States, often in small amounts. But they haven't evaluated all of them at the FDA in decades. Doctors say the majority are safe, but some chemicals allowed here have been banned overseas after being linked to cancer and developmental or behavioral issues. We need to put the F back into the Food and Drug Administration. She's a congresswoman from Chicago who introduced a bill requiring the (laughs) FDA to review certain chemicals banned overseas. If it passes, it would close what's known as the GRAS loophole, chemicals generally recognized as safe. She says this allows companies to skip an extensive safety review when adding many chemicals to foods. All right, did you see the governmental intervention, the creating of laws or legislation, which will, you know, it sounds good in theory, but, you know, this person probably has been in office forever. They didn't give a crap. But right until, you know, now, suddenly they care. They need to change this right now when this agenda is rolling out. So, um the law, you know, will pass and products will be scarce. 
Congresswoman says we are far behind other countries in food regulations. Right now in California, there's a proposed legislation that would ban five common chemicals from all foods that are sold. California would be the first state to do this, and that could then trickle down to other places. It's not just chemicals, though. There are also heavy metals to watch out for. A new Consumer Reports investigation reveals a dark side to some of your favorite dark chocolate. Here we go. Lead and chocolate and all the stuff that we like and are accustomed to eating. Um, things that they have prepared and sold us and they made legal. Now, all of a sudden, they're telling us it's bad and it's not safe to eat. Um, and they make these products in other countries and they don't put those chemicals in them there. They just do it here. So really, this transition is all about America. So everybody else has been dealing with scarcity and all this stuff over the last couple of years, but we have not. So we're getting ready to go into our famine season because these things are going to begin to impact us. Our tests found concerning levels of cadmium or lead, two toxic heavy metals, in most of the dark chocolate bars we tested. Consumer Reports tested 28 dark chocolate bars and the results? For 23 of the bars, eating just an ounce a day would put an adult over a level that CR's experts and public health authorities say may be harmful. Long-term exposure to heavy metals can cause kidney damage, hypertensive, hypertension, and reproductive issues. Don't just assume that organic is better. CR's test found that organic dark chocolate was just as likely to have concerning levels of heavy metals as other products. The other thing is they want you to fear eating. You don't have, like, here, here's my perspective, and you can agree or disagree with it. Um, but we don't, un unless you grow your own food, you don't have any choice but to eat what they produce or you're going to die. So you got to eat whatever you're going to eat. And they didn't care about us eating and dying or being ill or whatever because they have this vicious cycle of you need to eat whatever to excess. Then you can go to the hospital and pay excessive fees and buy medication um, endlessly instead of you know, detoxing your body and fasting or doing whatever you could do to heal your body on its own because it has the ability to do that. So now they're tired of taking care of us and they have overextended in every way. We don't have any money, so they don't have any money to steal from us. And so the whole thing got to collapse. The Ponzi scheme is falling apart. So they're going to drive us into um, poverty <laughs> and hunger with fear. You don't eat this, don't eat this. This is better. So they're going to pull all this stuff and they're going to tell you, we've reformulated this and it's better, but they're not going to tell you how. We've taken away the bad stuff out of the packaging after, shoot, almost a hundred years and uh, we've made it better. It doesn't make any sense. Okay, growing up, we were always told chocolate wasn't the healthiest option anyway, but Fish is supposed to be one of the best things you can eat, except doctors say some kinds could have high levels of mercury that could cause some problems. Possible health risks from mercury include. All right, I'm not going to do any more of this because I already we already talked about the fish, but you see where I'm going. See how these stories are coming out in the media. They're telling you food is bad. Don't eat this. Don't eat this. Be fearful of this. Be, don't eat that. It has this in it. Um, you know, they don't want you to eat fresh fish because fresh fish is in the environment. It has this in it. They don't want you to eat uh, leafy green vegetables, except for the ones that they give you. They don't want you to eat butter, which comes from cows. Cows fart and pollute the environment. See where I'm going with that? Okay, so let me read one more thing for you and then I'm done. All right, so the last thing I found, um, and I saw this um, on another site because people are concerned about it because it is a part of the three-letter organization's agenda with the scary man who sounds like a 
sci-fi villain. Okay, so here it is, rationing and climate change mitigation. And I will include a link to this in the description so that you can read it for yourself. Uh, this came out um, let's see it was accepted on January 5th 2023 published February 19th 2023 it says it was received by um, on June 25th 2021 so they've had this since 2021 and they sat on it so it comes out at the same time that the all these stories are coming out about rationing, changing um, the formulas for food, the PFAS and the PFOS. Um, all of it is connected. So don't sleep on what is happening. And this Nathan Wood person, these names were mentioned in that other rationing study that I told you about um, that was on Science Daily, which is also in the um, videos and I will also include that at the end of this video. So here's the abstract. In this paper we argue that rationing has been neglected as a policy for mitigating climate change. There is a broad scientific consensus that avoiding the most severe impacts of climate change requires a rapid reduction in global emissions. We argue that rationing could help states reduce emissions rapidly and fairly. Our arguments in this paper draw on economic analysis and historical research into rationing in the UK, where the Kerrygold butter comes from and where they're already doing the rationing of the lettuce and tomatoes and other vegetables. The two world wars highlighting success stories and correcting misconceptions. However, although the empirical details play an important role. The paper is primarily based on philosophical and ethical argument and policy analysis, particularly highlighting the normative assumptions behind policy choices. So you remember the lady in the news article was saying she passed legislation to remove the bad chemical out of the food or out of the um, plastic so that you don't have to worry about that stuff anymore after having eaten it for almost 100 years and touched it. We build on Hugh Upton's work in healthcare ethics, rejecting a broader conception of rationing, which conceals significant distinctions between policy options, obscuring the specific advantages of an ego, uh, ego, egalitarian conception of rationing. While some argue of the modernization, some argue for the modernization of rationing, introducing tradable allowances, we argue that the rejection of markets and a commitment to fair shares, here we go with the equality, rationing the language tradable allowances that is going to be like tied to your social credit score and your carbon emissions and your uh, digital currency we argue that the rejection of markets and a commitment to fair shares is a key part of that of the value of rationing and precisely what made rationing attractive to the public in the 1940s. So here we go. Now, 1940s was how long the PFAS has been in these products they want to pull. And you see here, they talk about the 1940s. So they, there's an agenda here. So I'm not going to read any more to you. I'm going to just leave this in the um, description section. But I just wanted to hip you to what is happening. So again, please make sure that you get the things that you need, the things that you like. Um, you know, I'm not one to tell you what to do and what not to do. Do I think this stuff is bad for you? Yes. Do I think everything that the Saxons do is bad for us? Yes. But we are at their mercy, especially as African-Americans. We are hostages in a domestic violence relationship. We are like Cinderella. <laughs> 
in the ugly stepsisters. We are the ones who are forced to do all the labor. We're getting the scraps and the crumbs. We're getting the worst of everything. Except for everybody is. But, you know, for us, it, it's just... Um, you know, one thing after the next, but I want to hip you to what is going on because this thing that they're doing, they're going to do it with everything, especially things that they want us to stop having. So butter is going to be a luxury because butter comes from cows. They want to get rid of cows. They only want to have cows for themselves. They are supposed to eat the best butter and everything. You're supposed to have nothing but them green sticks from soil and green uh, they don't want you to have good tomatoes. They want you to have the worst stuff. Um, fish, same thing. They don't want you to eat fresh fish. They want you to eat farm-raised fish. And they're going to tell you that it's produced in a safe, sustainable way. While Meanwhile, they pollute all the waters. It's just a big mind screw at the end of the day. We're not going to be able to beat these people. Pray, look up, rely on the most high to deliver us from this evil and wickedness and do your best you can to endure to the end. Keep watch, keep watch, keep watch. If you like this video, please like it. Please share it with somebody that you know who is asleep and subscribe to this channel along with my rumble channel and my odyssey channel in the event that this channel is taken down i anticipate soon it will be gone because i'm hipping y'all to the game and i'm not cutting up raccooning and doing tiktok dances and telling you about stuff that doesn't matter so again thank you all for your time i appreciate you staying awake paying attention to what's happening share this among your social media um, friends so that they can understand what is happening and let's try to navigate this wild wacky time together all right y'all i'm out